What's up? This is Vin, and uh, today we're gonna take a, a old boombox, the boombox here, with like CD rape and tape, not rape, C CD radio and tape, um, <laughs> like a uh, player, and uh, yeah, it works. If I turn the radio, the song, and I'm just gonna it works, be okay you know? with that. But like. It doesn't have aux input, so we're gonna put aux input on it. And also, it would be cool, you know, if we had, if it had a way to hook up a USB like plug for like a charger, you know. So we're gonna look at, you know, hooking up something, buying one of those cheap chargers, and seeing if we can find 12 volts in there, and you know, have a charger and have aux input, yada yada. So anyway, we're gonna take a look at that today on just a pretty generic old boombox from pre-MP3 player days. I don't know how old it is. Okay, so like, as you can see right here, they kind of set these up where you're expected to have the longest screwdriver of all times. And then like, there's a hole there, you know? And some of the other holes, like, how do you even get to them? I bet you there's one in this center hole. So taking it apart could be an adventure, but it looks like I could just use like a multi-screwdriver with like a ratchet extension in this big hole, unless it gets a lot smaller. So we'll see what we can do. Okay, so like I got this set up. This long screw tip bit is what I use for like putting a coping on the ramps. Because they can like go through the coping pipe and then put a screw in the bottom of it. Anyways, so like these are pretty easy to get to these side ones. I mean, you could do that with like a normal screwdriver, kind of. You'd be at more of an angle. I can get a little more straight on with this, even though see that still that slot right there is still that bit receiver won't go in there. But the key is that I can get this screw, and that is really the, you know, to get that screw. It's like they don't want you to take these things apart. But anyways, that's what we're finding out about taking it apart. And uh, we'll get it apart and then we'll have a look inside. Yeah. Alright, so a little bit about analyzing this thing. Obviously these are the, this is the tape player. And the CD player is up here. And the antenna input for the radio is here. And then the control board is like that right there you know because that goes to like all the buttons and controls and stuff so and they're connected in you know, like different sections you've got like a main board here that outputs to the speakers so it obviously amplifies and this will wire you know we were found earlier that went back to the power supply that uh brought in power and turned it into what this thing can use and so you look around and you think, okay, all of these, the CD player, the tape deck, the radio, they produce a pre-amplified output and then send it to the amp and then output it to the speakers. Okay, so I look at, and I see this wire, the telltale sign, I'm thinking, okay, that's probably a preamp wire because of the extra shielding over it so that it doesn't pick up... Uh, interference in other words when electromagnetic radiation from the sun or from the big bang or whatever comes by here it will change the flow of electrons and this tape deck you know is producing a flow of electrons through the wired a preamplified flow you don't want that to get any interference to distort the sound and make it sound basically bad trash static in other words um and so i look at where it goes and then I look on the board and lo and behold, look what it says right there. Preamp. Yeah. And then here's a Okay, so that little red line's probably the positive audio. And what does it do? Well it comes right over to here. It goes down through this little resistor and then straight into this pin. So that tells us probably what's going on there. 
Um, what I noticed when I tried to run sound in here and and, uh, and just touch a preamplified line coming from the MP3 player to these pins is that I got sound, a clean sound out, but it was very weak. And so that tells me probably the tape deck put out, you know, a louder preamplified sound. But one thing about CD players is they put out something very similar to what MP3, MP3, MP3 players put out. And in my experience, when you use the radio circuits, they on their own the antenna and all that, they tend to work well too as far as amplification. So, anyways, probably the what the capacitors do is step up the power. They just because all capacitors do is store energy and then it can be drained out and you know be bigger. Um, so the resistor that's in the circuit probably acts as protection for the chip, you know, just to keep too much power from coming through. Um, or yada yada, drop the voltage some. So, but the main thing is, you know, regardless of having to be a wizard about it, you know, which I'm not, I can see how the CD player comes in. It comes a long way from the CD player area. It goes through a resistor, goes through a capacitor, it goes into the chip. All right, so what about the radio? Because you see, using the CD player as an audio input's a problem, um, it has to have a CD in there and be reading a CD if it says no disc, then it doesn't run audio through and you don't hear anything out of the speakers and it just doesn't work. You know, you can touch it on here and nothing's happening. But the radio will just be on. And you can set it to a weak station. You can even take the antenna off the thing and uh, get a good clean sound if you just find, you know, where the radio does what it has to do. In other words, the radio takes the antenna input right here. And then it turns that into and a pre-amplified audio feed kind of over here in the radio region right and then it's going to send that over to our chip so what we need to do is look on this chip for a line that comes way over here runs through a resistor or through a capacitor then a resistor and then possibly sometimes radios will have you know two of them a left and a right so if you see two you know coming over there running side by side making their little journey over to here I'll tell you something most of these pins on the amplifier chip will go out and like split off and do all kinds of things and come back in and split to another one that comes back in and they'll all join you know and it's just doing things that couldn't be done inside the chip and it's just got to be expanded outside the chip um, okay so if what we find out is that the pins right next to the CD player inputs have those exact features we're looking for they run over here they come to these little jumpers they jump over and they come uh, it was these jumpers here and they come over and they go right up and they go through a capacitor somewhere in the line I forgot where it was I think it's kinda early on in the line they go through a capacitor and then when they get over here they go through a resistor and they connect to ground but they they split off and go through another resistor and go and then split off and do all kinds of things in the radio region so that would be a good test for where we want to poke All right. and the thing is we're going through a resistor and a capacitor which is what the CD player did so that's a good idea that that would probably be a safe place to, to solder in because the CD player sends its preamp in that way through a resistor and through a capacitor to the chip so that tells us that's a good place to poke. We've traced something that goes through, comes out, it goes through that capacitor, it goes through that resistor, and then it does all kinds of stuff in the radio area. All right, and then what I noticed is if I look at that spot that I trace the circuits back to, what do I find? Yes, yes, yes. They labeled it for us. See, it goes through those resistors. And it has these two resistors going to the big ground thing, big ground copper. But see, it goes to those capacitors and it starts splitting off and do all kinds of stuff in the radio. Left out and right out. And so, yeah, I touched sound to it and I got clean sound out of it. And uh, 
I'll demonstrate that for you here now in just a second. Let me get it all hooked up. Here, he's looking at the tool. It's uh, this little wire, you know, with the little solder tips, and the white one is the ground, uh, and it can be hooked to like an audio feed, you know. So this gives me ability to poke and see if I hear sound. Uh, the audio feed to the points that I showed you and to the, the most nearby ground which it went through those resistors to ground right there next to it so this is a little bit let's see if we hear it So this is the aux input cable soldered in. Uh, this is the extended ground. I don't know if you can see the right and the left. Struggling to focus. The right and the left there. You should be able to see that going to where they're supposed to go to. And then that of course it was a six foot aux input cable, auxiliary cable that uh, my friend Joey bought and then I just used the other the rest of it he bought for like six bucks and it, we used three feet of it in his car and three feet of it here so now that's hooked in alright one little added thing I like to do is come in where you know the audio connects and sometimes you have a bunch of little things soldered together and then there's little wires that are kind of exposed and dangling and jangling to some degree and and to just kind of cement things to the board I just like to put hot glue on it the hot glue will come up in the future if you have to take it off it will probably rip your solder connections that you made off but if something's wrong you might need to be disconnecting them and in this boom box there's so much extra room to like you don't have to worry about the solder taking up extra room and all it does you know it'll that's some dirty hot glue but all, it'll it'll insulate uh, stuff from stuff so it's not like it's a bad thing. okay so the radio's power supply you know is on this back side the boom box it, it's a big battery pack and this is where it actually turns that AC voltage into the things that the, the inner circuitry needs and uh, you know it takes it in from the batteries and takes in the other thing uh, the main the main plug and there's a little plug right here this 9 volt ground AC CNTR center what's that say D up <laughs> Anyways, first thought is just, let's just see if it's really 9 volts coming out of the 9 volt pin. And it's just touched the ground into the 9 volt pin. And I'm going to touch this, the black line to the ground and the red line to the 9 volts. And let's see what it reads. Lo and behold, 12 volts are with us. That means we can buy one of those really, 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 really cheap chargers, solder in wires on this board, and connect them to the really, really cheap charger, and just put it on here somewhere. You know, one of those cheap car chargers that they sell, like at the gas station for a couple dollars. And then we'll have a USB charging feature too. Uh, I don't know if it'll give you a sound ground a ground loop you know and give you a buzz when you try to charge and play music through your mp3 player that you're charging at the same time but the key is that for some reason we got 12 volts on that line that says 9 volts in there <laughs> okay there it is soldered to that board 
as always with any connection you want to make sure you don't cross to something that you're not supposed to cross to it'll be a no no so anyways put, put that doodad back where it goes and you know Alright, and so there it is. We connected one wire to one and one wire to the other. And now, I'm going to put that thing back together. Here it is back together. The wires just run out the holes in the side where the ground connectors were. And the pin that went in the tip is removed. And that little metal collar there doesn't actually, it just connects to plastic. So it's no big deal, just like uh, this one does. So here it is all done, the speakers put on there. I ran the aux cable out right here and like cut away a little bit of the plastic to get it through without pinching it too much and just kind of ran it over to here. Let's see that. It's looped around nylon ties that go through these like radiator fins and stuff. It's, it's like tied around the nylon tie which is cinched down on it, holds it down. Charger wires come out kind of sort of where this thing comes together. The whole like two pieces of the main back piece and the front piece like come together. And then it's nylon tied into place. So there's the charger. And okay. It powers up. So here's our little charger on the back. And Alright. There it goes. That took me a second. Let's see if we can see. Oh, I believe it says that it is charging. Alright. Now, of course, we have to go to radio to do anything with this and we'll hook up the audio line and it gets an incredible hum if you're charging at the same time that you're running audio see silent as can be except for now it wants to go to state incredible hum <laughs> Yeah, so let us play some musica and we'll just undo the charger for now. That's a ground loop um, just because there's two ways for things to ground out. And once this uh, player loads, there it goes. And it sounds nice and clean right there. input installed on a 99 Sony boombox it's like cassette you know TV thing with a radio on it um so you want to do this, you know, just follow along what I did. Um, hopefully it made sense to you. And if you enjoyed this video, it would be cool if you would like and subscribe and stuff like that. And check out my other videos. I've got a lot of videos about Christian apologetics and, you know, proving Christianity true. That may offend you. You may think that's cool. Who knows? But at least check them out. Argue with me. Whatever. Um, I've got a blog about similar things. Um... I've also got an invention that uh, I'm trying to put the word out on that because I'm a lonely inventor who 
came up with an idea and he's trying to market it but he's never sold anything like that before so it'd be cool if you would at least watch my video and share it and maybe someone who you know would watch it it's uh, called parallel saw patent pending my tail saw and my saw in one tool and uh, maybe you'll be able to do this hack on a boombox of your own and hope you enjoyed this and I guess we'll sign out with Jesus loves you and makes sense too.